Whether a classic Impala or sleek Corvette, you probably have heard of the American automobile giant Chevrolet. Chevrolet is one of the popular brands in the motoring industry, and it has been a household name long before we were born. Also referred to as Chevy, Chevrolet is a popular motor company owned by the General Motors Company or GM. Being one of America's most loved car empires, the automobile brand offers a wide range of reliable vehicles, from medium-duty commercial trucks to subcompact cars. Put in like Henry Ford or Enzo Ferrari, Louis Chevrolet's story is a little bit tragic. A passionate petrol head, Louis's journey, although filled with terrible challenges, was nothing short of impressive. The story of Chevrolet begins with an immigrant mechanic who loves to live on the fast lane. Mr. Chevrolet proved his might on and off the track and was beginning to get famous, but things took a turn when he decided to quit the company he co-founded. Ever since it was a life of many failed attempts for the Swiss racer, and things could only get a lot worse. Although Chevrolet would later become a success, not much of it can be credited to Mr. Chevrolet. December 25, 1878 saw the birth of Louis Joseph Chevrolet in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. His dad, Joseph Felicien Chevrolet, was a watch and clock maker by trade, while his mom, Marie Anne Angeline, daughter of the popular Pierre Mann, was a local trader. When Louis was almost nine, economic problems started to plague the family so Joseph felt it was time to move. The family migrated to Bion in the Côte d'Or region of France where his other siblings, Gaston and Arthur Chevrolet, were born. While his dad went full-time into watchmaking, which the Swiss were known for at the time, Joseph made sure Chevrolet learned the art of watch repair. He also taught him fundamental mechanical skills and stressed the significance of precision in the manufacture of machine and motor parts, which immensely contributed to his skill as an engineer designer. Louis came from a modest family, and despite his father working around the clock to provide for a family of nine, things were still a bit rough, so Louis had to get a job to help with the family finances. He worked at a wine cellar as a guide and soon became impatient with a slow decanting of wine from cask to cask. So he invented a wine barrel pump that sped the process and was used in the Burgundy region for decades. Bicycle racing was a prominent weekend sport in Bonn, and this is where Louis developed his interest in speed. Chevrolet kept experimenting with various gear ratios until he found the perfect one for his physical ability. However, things didn't seem to improve, so Louis dropped out of grammar school in his teens to work as an apprentice in a bicycle shop. The owner of the local bicycle store had a Dion tricycle that usually broke down at intervals. So instead of having his boss spend money on constant repairs, Louis bought repair manuals, studied them, and learned the fundamentals of small carriages and mending bicycles. So he worked on the bike and found the cause of the terminal fault and sent for parts from the manufacturer, and in no time the bike was in order. When he realized that he could make extra cash from his knowledge of bicycles and repairs, Louis began building bicycles in the winter and selling them to tourists in the summer under the name Frontenac, which he named after one of the governors of France's North American colonies. At about this time, Louis saw his first automobile and was amazed at the new invention. So he designed his own bicycle, which he used in local races. Louis was so good at bicycle racing that he often finished first place. He designed yet another bicycle dubbed the Gladiator. It was so impressive that it caught the eye of one of the managers at the Dirac Automaking Plant who encouraged Louis to join the company. During his time in Dirac, Louis mastered the basics of internal combustion and four-stroke engines. In 1898, the Swiss National got a job with a company called Morris Auto, and at the age of 21, he was sent to an auto dealership in Montreal, Canada. Louis would later work as a chauffeur mechanic for over six months and then relocated to Brooklyn, New York. As soon as he touched down in the US, he made up his mind to do something closely related to his passion, racing. So Chevrolet got a job at the Dedion Bouton Motorrad Company and was later given the opportunity to be a backup race car driver for Fiat in New York City. Things began to look a little brighter but Louis never knew tragedy was only lurking around. One day, Louis was at work when a colleague ran to tell him he had an important call from home. When he responded, he was told that his dad had passed on, and for the first time in many years, he broke down. In 1901, Louis realized he had to be strong for the family, so he brought them to America, and in 1915, he became a citizen. In the early days of the auto industry, automobile companies gained publicity for their products by winning hill climbing road, endurance, and track races. Louis got his big break by defeating two legendary outstanding racers, Walter Christie and Barney Oldfield, on May 20, 1905, at the Old Hippodrome in New York's Morris Park. Driving a 90-horse-powered Fiat, 
Louis raced around the track, barely slowing down at the curves at a record-setting 68 miles per hour. Later that year, he competed and won against Henry Ford and Walter Christie in a one-mile race at Cape May, New Jersey. And in 1905, Chevrolet married his wife Suzanne Trevoux, who would later have two sons for him, Charles Louis and Alfred Joseph. Finally, Louis's dreams were coming true. At 27, he became a celebrity and eventually attracted the attention of the founder of General Motors, William Durant. In 1907, Durant invited the Chevrolet brothers, Louis and Arthur, to try out for a job as his chauffeur in Flint, Michigan. Arthur landed the job because he was a careful driver, while Louis, who won more races, joined the Buick racing team. Louis Chevrolet won many races for the team, including the York Trophy in Lowell, Massachusetts. And if there was a race he didn't win, it was because his equipment failed. Chevrolet had several accidents that took him over three years to recover from. Hence, he added a stake to the middle of the car, which saved him from dangerous accidents. With the money he had earned from racing and his experience over the years, he knew it was time to finally work on a project of his own. So, he opened a garage in Detroit, Michigan in 1909, where he began to build and test four- and six-cylinder car engines. Louis was a hard worker who rarely delegated duties to his subordinates. Despite his quick temper, he was still very friendly and loyal to friends and family. But in 1910, something happened that would later change the trajectory of things. General Motors constantly got in trouble with its stockholders, and Durant was subsequently fired. So due to his loyalty to the man that brought him on board, Chevrolet followed him and offered him a proposal to design a small, luxurious touring car. Durant took the deal and Louis built a six-cylinder automobile he named Chevrolet, which was the beginning of the brand. In 1912, Chevrolet had sold 3,000 units at a cost of $2,150 for one, which should have been worth over $65,000 today. In 1914, the company sold 16,000 vehicles and recorded over $1.3 million in profit. The Chevrolet had the first gear shift lever in the field of the floor. The first out-of-the-way emergency brake placed under the dashboard, things began to shape for Louis, but little did he know that he was about to make the biggest mistake of his life. Durant was more interested in competing with Ford and added a cheaper car to the Chevrolet nameplate. Already, Louis was known to be hot-tempered, but this was more than he could handle. He didn't want to be associated with inexpensive cars in the Chevrolet Automobile Company and desperately wanted to return to racing so he sold his stock before it appreciated. Chevrolet became a successful designer of race cars. In 1914, he founded the Frontanic Motor Company and built four race cars. And in 1916, all three Chevrolet brothers entered the Indiana 500 Classic, but none of the Frontanacs finished the race. In 1915, Louis decided to try something new, so he constructed the Cornelian, a new car for the Blood Brothers Machine Company. From 1916 to 1919, Chevrolet experimented with airplane engines due to the war in Europe. He also served as chief engineer and vice president for American Motors. In 1920, Louis returned to the racing business and with Gaston at the wheel, his Frontenac automobile won the Indianapolis race. But in November of that same year, Gaston died in the Los Angeles race and things took an unpleasant turn. Unfortunately, Louis was not an astute businessman, so he lost a lot of money in his attempt to manufacture a line of Frontenac passenger cars. Soon, the 1922 depression cut short production, and Louis had to assume all the debt acquired by Alan Ryan's Frontenac Corporation of Delaware. Overwhelmed by the loss of his brother, Chevrolet vowed never to race again, so he and his other brothers produced the Chevrolet 333, an efficient aircraft engine that would later cause a rift between them. So he joined Glenn L. Martin, a Baltimore Ford dealer, but lost out in the stock market crash in 1929. Aged and left with no option, he went to the Chevrolet division of General Motors, where he worked as a consultant and retired in 1938 due to health complications. Sadly, on June 6, 1941, Louis Chevrolet passed on, and he was buried next to his brother at the Holy Cross Cemetery, close to the Indianapolis Speedway. Although Louis Chevrolet definitely had his reasons for selling his stock in the Chevrolet Automobile Company, I like to consider it a tragic mistake. If only he could see the future, maybe he would have held on to his stock, and today he would have been celebrated like the likes of Henry Ford, Batista Pininfarina, Enzo Ferrari, and Carl Benz. And that's it, folks. Let's know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed our video, ensure to drop a like, subscribe, and push the notification bell icon to be updated whenever we post exciting content. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.